Hello. Uh, hello. Hello, Radek. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, welcome to the last day of Blockchain Community Days 2023. I'm Alexandra Marginanu, and I'll be your host for today's session on blockchain on humanitarian missions from Ukraine to Niger, Somalia, and DRC. But before we dive in, as usual, a couple of reminders. The session is recorded. Recording will be available in a week's time. If you're not comfortable with staying on, you can watch the recording and post um, your questions on that recording as well. Um, talk will last for 45 minutes and we'll have a tiny QA session at the end. Uh, feel free to share your comments, ideas, and insights uh, in the chat on YouTube on the We Are Community page. And in case there are a multitude of questions, please upvote the ones you find most interesting. Now that we got that out of the way, we are joined today by Radek Vyachbinski, the founder and general director of Unsung Heroes Acceleration Program, a multinational accelerator for startups with technologies that might be helpful on humanitarian missions worldwide. The organizational team and mentors come from 37 different countries. Organization works with MAP Africa, Polish Humanitarian Action, and a few other local humanitarian organizations working from Benin, South Sudan or Bangladesh. Moreover, Radek Vizinski is a co-founder of Ideal Bistro, uh, which is uh, one of the 10 best startups in Poland selected by NCBR in the pilot edition of NCBR Nevada Acceleration Program in the United States. Also co-founder and board member of Fureco Natural, a strategic partner of Zoom, who is a global producer of biodegradable packaging. Radek also gained his previous experience in, at MBank, Noble Securities, and CT Hanboy. Radek, uh, we're very happy to have you with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, uh, thank, thank you for introducing me. So I would like to uh, say hello for everybody uh, and soon start my presentation. Mm. So uh, hopefully you can see my screen. So I will start presenting. Uh, so presenting this. So thank you for your coming. Thank you that you would like to listen to me. So we would like to say about how and maybe the first why blockchain uh, can streamline local societies is so called global south. Mm, wh why you think so? Wh what's the difference between north and south in terms of money, for example? This is also about supply chain, but not only. This is about the credibility. This is about corruptions. This is about corruption in politics. So blockchain is the answer when you think about trust, when you think about different things that might be um, credibility, that, that might build credibility in the world that is unfair. So as unsung heroes, we try to change the world using innovative technologies. Why we do so? Because every 10 seconds, one kid is dying because of hunger. Also, 2 billion people has no access to clean water. Also, 2 billion people live under $1 a day. 4 billion people has no access to primary health care including 100 million Americans. And this is not about numbers, this is about people and what we do as people to change these numbers, to change people's lives. We, we do two little things. However, using blockchain technology, we can improve many things we are doing and make it better. So in December last year, we decided to organize humanitarian technology startup accelerator that on one side is the bridge between humanitarian organizations and on the second side with startups mostly we focus on different water tech solutions on different agro and food tech solutions what we are going doing what we are going to do very quick so we are going to do in person startup accelerators in different places in the world like in democratic republic of congo bangladesh and other places um, Radek, if I could interrupt you for just one second, um, mm -hmm. please push the hide button on your screen so we can only see your presentation. Mm, you can see my presentation or no, now it's better? Yeah, but there is also a pop-up. 
there. That's okay. 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 Uh, so maybe one. <laughs> so just give me a ten seconds to make it improve to improve myself. Okay, I'm uploading the presentation. Mm -hmm. Can you see right now my slides? Yes. I don't see them just yet. Okay, because I can see you, me and our slides. Okay, Alex said it works. Okay. Yep, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. Okay, so let's let's move forward. Uh, so in the time of six months, we involved uh, startup mentors from already forty three countries. As well, um, we uh, there were like seventy four startup applications from twenty nine countries, and we finally involved twenty seven startups from nineteen countries. Uh, we work with seven humanitarian organizations right now, so so we are matching different uh, global challenges that blockchain might be helpful with uh, startups. So let's go to the next point. So you will see a seven years old boy uh, at school, isn't he? No. Why? Because he has to work right now as he's seven years old. In the city of Goma, in Democratic Republic of Congo, 40,000 kids working in mines and globally 1 million kids working in mines in today's world. Is it fair? No, absolutely it's not. But why it happens like this? Because there is no education and this is like the devil circle because no education generates you have no money. So as you, has, as you have no money, you cannot educate yourself. So you can go... Um, Oh, it's not you can we cannot see, but you can go you, you can become a farmer, you can go to the army, you can become rebel. But also we can teach you IT skills so then you can generate um, money. Uh, for example, we will uh, um, set up our in-person startup accelerator and IT school just in Goma, uh, in Democratic Republic of Congo, to give people the first possibility of make the end of this uh, devil circle for the first time in many generations they live in that one location so th 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 this is about why this is happening and these are our humanitarian partners that already spoke with uh, our startups some of them might be really interesting um, in terms of blockchain technologies as well at the end of the presentation uh, I will tell you about some grants, uh, equity-free grants possibilities from different international organizations that you can apply for money with your startup that is based on blockchain technology. And we can, of course, support you with this. So th this is why. This is why we organize those humanitarian tech call for startups, where we focus on nine um, industries from food to fintech. However, as I will, I will tell you, later all of them might be 
um, created uh, in blockchain and it's very helpful in different use cases in Africa countries that I'm going to tell you um, in a while. So also before we started our acceleration, we also made like a um, brainstorming with uh, Polish humanitarian action where we typed several problems that take part in humanitarian missions worldwide. They start from food problems, with agro-food problem, with supply chain problem. And trust me that, for example, there is uh, some well on the desert with water pump. However, water pump is broken. So you need to uh, make a learning course how to, how to solve the problem. However, you have no internet, you have no GSM network. You, you have to go to the city. However, your car is broken. And there are many, many devil circles where at least one startup can break it. Because if there is like several points when each problem generates the next problem and then the next problem, one startup can solve this. And this might be a blockchain solution as well. So we selected 27 companies. Um, so in a while, I will come to fintech companies because at the at the very beginning, blockchain, at least for me, uh, I imagine blockchain as something for fintech. However, as I will tell you in a while, it's not exactly the true because we can use blockchain in many, many areas like a voting system, like mm, digital currencies for central banks and, and others. Uh, but let's focus first on those three fintechs uh, that are already in Africa countries. For example, Monix, this is like instant money transfers. And Rexta is a very interesting example because this is a micro lending company from Nigeria where 100 million people has no access to any financial services in the country. 100 million people has nothing to eat. And the average uh, loan for people is $10. Yes, $10. This is the average amount of the size of the loan they give for people. And last but not least, and this is the first blockchain company, uh, it's a FDI world that is already based in Dubai. However, they make like a fund, um, crowdfunding based on tokens. So for example, if uh, some African government wants to make um, fundraising for some large project like building uh, road, um, building some uh, highways, building train stations, building some big infrastructure projects, so they can make crowdfunding based on tokens. And many people can invest money on those projects that in our countries where well, they have been done many years ago, but they already are happen in African countries. So this is where we go to the core of the presentation. So why blockchain can improve mostly African countries. So first of all, I would like to show you how it's the peer-to-peer -peer share of all transaction volume by country year to year in Africa and other countries based on uh, Bitcoin and other assets. So I can see um, Bitcoin is much more popular in Africa region than in other regions itself. Also the number of all transactions with the average amount of $200 is still growing. Um, there was a little decrease of this uh, because of the COVID, but then it's still, uh, it still go ahead. So there's more and more such transactions that people use this uh, cryptocurrencies. Regarding Africa is mostly in Nigeria and Kenya. And I will tell you why it happens in very short uh, time. But, but also I would like to say about VC transactions, when we have uh, mm, African market uh, year to year and how it grew, how it grow year to year after between 2021 and 2022, we can see that we can see that the total amount of money that is invested in startups doubled between those years. Mm, let, so 
So let's talk also about uh, central bank digital currencies. So the good example here is uh, Nigeria that put and launched the such uh, digital currency uh, by Central Bank of Nigeria. And it works, however, nobody use uh, this digital currency. So you can ask why nobody use this. This is, this is because government mm, changed the rules about, and if you want to trade uh, the digital currency, you need to register in official Nigeria uh, central bank system. And if you want to make small amount transactions, so you need to put a little uh, your, your personal data. However, if you want to send more money, you need to give more and more your data so that's that's mean that it's totally not uh, transparent for users. Uh, also, uh, government uh, have access to all databases of uh, people who buy and sell digital currency. So, so this project was not success. Mm, also, this is about peer-to-peer -peer trading of electricity, because there is like twenty percent electricity that is stolen in Africa by illegal uh, soccers, uh, mm, by users. So more, po more and more popular are solutions that protect the um, owners of electricity to protect the interest uh, of this. Also, this is about digital claims of identity and ownership. For example, in Nigeria, where we have like 1 million people living in uh, rural, rural uh, areas, um, many people when they are born are not registered anywhere and for government it's very hard to register somebody's identity so blockchain technology can solve this problem for for local society also this is about for example your job um, experience based on blockchain for example uh, if you someone comes from west to east your country and say that he has this kind of experience in different work maybe he's lying but if you can confirm his work experience in blockchain then it must work for them uh, so the, the next thing is land registration and here we have the examples of kenya and ghana in, in kenya we have a very corrupted uh, land uh, ministry where there is a lot of crimes regarding uh, registration the land uh, also uh, people don't know that somebody else sold their land for somebody else so to protect the uh, law to some land we can use blockchain applications to, to to show that you are the owner of the land it's also very helpful in ghana because in ghana when you want to buy or sell the land you make the orla oral agreements you don't need a paper so blockchain supports you very very much to um, to protect your law to to the uh, asset you already bought then we have also variable digital education credentials this is also about like work experience aid um, trade facilitation so what we can say about sierra leone we had um, uh, voting system in 2018 uh, based on blockchain in Sierra Leone um, and it works uh, people uh, who has no possibility to go even like 20 miles to somewhere because they have no car or no animal to move somewhere it's much better to use blockchain technology to vote also you don't need to print a lot of papers that is very climate tech oriented thing Mm, the next thing uh, is about Kenya and Kenya uh, actually actually Kenya the biggest uh, block uh, Bitcoin turnover in Africa is in Kenya however Kenya uh, the, said it's illegal to buy anything uh, in uh, Bitcoin uh, however the highest amount of transaction is already in Kenya and then we have uh, Nigeria as I mentioned to use um, for digital currency to to identify anybody and so on so as you can see blockchain technology is very helpful on humanitarian projects and on in so-called global south so also when you 
for example, consider to build your company in Africa, two top choices where you can build your business is Kenya or Nigeria. These are two biggest markets with two biggest number of venture capitalists to launch your uh, startup business uh, there. So this is Lagos in Nigeria and Nairobi in Kenya um, as the first examples uh, of, of this. Um, also, I saw it before, but this is about the amount of money that is put for startups in Africa that is doubled between 2022 and 2021. Uh, also, very interesting thing about uh, um, venture rounds um, in Africa and the US, when we compare the um, round number, so this is like the seed number, uh, the, this is the majority of rounds is seed. Much less uh, such um, rounds are, for example, Series C or Series B. The, the much more of them is in the US. This is because, of course, the poor of the market, um, you have no such many investors and the, as in the US and, and so on. So this is because of this. Mm. So regarding our team, we are located in 16 countries already and we have like um, 80 volunteers right now in Asang Heroes Acceleration Program. Our mentors are right now in 43 countries um, but uh, also th this this uh, this number is still uh, growing what i want to tell you that if you have a blockchain technology that can support people living in uh, global south we can uh, help you with um, applying for different grants for example from the world bank for example, from the US um, Agency of International Development, USAID, and other institutions that invest in innovations for people, uh, for societies where people live under $2 a day. So if your technology might support uh, societies in poor countries, so then contact us and we will support you to gather grants uh, from 20 uh, from 250,000 US dollars to 15 million US dollars um, so this is about us this is our website and my email address so if you would like to collaborate collaborate anyway anyhow so please contact and we will um, answer you shortly and uh, my presentation of course is a little shorter because I, I, I cannot speak um, like in general, I like to be very focused on the subject. However, uh, in 45 minutes, when uh, the presentation should take time, uh, almost 250 kids uh, die now because of hunger from the moment when I start the presentation. 248, 248 kids died in the last several minutes. So we are looking for technologies that can support people living in rural areas people who has no access to it and have no law because nobody care of them so blockchain technology yes might support many many people in such locations so please stay in touch we can support each other to support many lives so thank you thank you for your coming thank you for listening to me i hope um i i, I meet your expectation regarding regarding the, the, the presentation. Yes, blockchain is very helpful on humanitarian missions and in poor countries. Thank you. Thank you, Radek, very much. Um, this was a moving presentation. Um, I think even if um, the presentation was so short, we can look at the chat, see if any questions have popped okay. up. OK. Um, and I see one. So, what is the future potential of blockchain technology in the humanitarian sector? And what advancements or developments can we expect to see in the coming years? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, in my opinion, in many examples, this is about uh, this is about identity and, and building trust because you cannot uh, trust uh, in politics um, because if there is chance to cheat somebody, they will cheat you. So using technology, uh, using blockchain technology, it's much better because we can build credibility for all humans. 
So, in my opinion, if we take the near, if you take into consideration the nearest years uh, in terms of blockchain development, so it should be focused on a virtual identity about identity of your um, work experience, your education, uh, to make an make unavailable to cheat somebody, but everything is signed on uh, on blocks. So then, uh, every everything is much clear for everybody, and so then economics, different countries can develop much faster because we can do this um, with credibility for each other because of technology. So this is about identity. So this is about um, so this is about uh, land registration. So this is um, about um, money, micro lending, and so on. About crowdfunding um, in tokens. So so everybody can uh, can buy the tokens, and maybe it's better than buying some shares in some country, where where you as a, having some shares in some country, you have no power to um, go to the court and execute anything. But if you have tokens, probably in third world countries, you have more power to to talk to other people if, if something's going wrong so so the, 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 i hope it's answer the question uh, yeah yeah i think it does thank you Vade. um another one that we have is can you share insights on the scalability of blockchain solutions in different countries where humanitarian organizations operate Yes. So, uh, for example, based on uh, grants opportunities. So, if we collaborate to receive some grant from U.S. International um, Agency of for International International Development, we, for example, build some blockchain technology for one country. And if we meet some uh, milestones um, that are um, settled with uh, the donor, so then we can receive more money for scaling. And this is like the award number two. So first is, first is to build the technology for local market, and the second one is for scaling. So many problems uh, are the same in many countries. Everything is about corrupted. Everything is about uh, mm, about uh, st stalling something. Uh, is it land? Is it any, anything else? But uh, if we can create uh, blockchain technology in one country, we can scale it for many countries. For example, uh, for now, we have volunteers in several countries uh, in Africa. So uh, as we can collaborate with someone with his, his or her blockchain startup, we can very easily scale this for many countries in Africa because problems are really, really the same. So one technology may be copied everywhere. I hope it answered the question. Thank you, thank you so much, Radek. Um, I am browsing for more questions. Uh, okay, here's another one. So what are the benefits and potential financial opportunities for founders and companies in offering blockchain solutions to humanitarian organizations? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you should know that if you work with humanitarian organizations, it's not like you give your uh, solution for free. They pay for your solution. However, many startups don't know that they can work with nonprofit organizations, and nonprofit organizations are just B2B customers. But many times, startups that are focused on B2B customer, they think about other companies as customer, like B2B. Um, and this is like business to nonprofit, not business to business, but there is the uh, equal B2B, it's B2 nonprofit because. Also, nonprofit organizations pay for the solution. Also, humanitarian organizations pay for the solution. However, the process took a little longer because humanitarian organizations work from, from grant to grant. So if they want to collaborate with some blockchain startup, they need to fill the information about this in the application form and send this to donor and donor accept, and then they can buy the solution just uh, as a regular customer. So this is not like you have to give us this solution for free and the code and, um, and IP and so on. No, mm -hmm. everything is in you and humanitarian organization is just ordinary B2B customer. And also uh, very often uh, humanitarian organization 
is the first partner in the local country because if you have no if you have no connections in the local country you cannot build the trust because somebody need to trust you but if you have a humanitarian organization as a partner uh, so then you can go easily to the local government to some different non-profit local organizations and then build your network and give more and more con uh, awareness of your brand and awareness of, of your value proposition um, so 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 first humanitarian organizations will pay for the solution as b2b customer and as well they support you in soft lending in the specific country and moreover humanitarian organization humanitarian organizations don't work in one specific country but for example like polish humanitarian action or map Africa, they work in several countries so once you are in one country so it's easier to get to more countries because they have scale already thanks mm -hmm. thank you uh, okay and another one uh, how can blockchain technology be integrated with existing sy systems and processes in humanitarian organizations without disrupting their operations Okay, it works simultaneously. Uh, so, for example, humanitarian organization uh, check health of, of people. So we can uh, save data of health based on blockchain. If, for example, in Nigeria, somebody, uh, there is a family, but uh, mother don't register their kids to any local government because she has no possibility to went uh, 20 miles to some small town to make it. So if we so for example humanitarian organizations also support local governments to register people not in the moment where, where they are born they can be several years old uh, but nobody registered them before so humanitarian organizations register such people for to support local uh, government so this data might be safe in blockchain so then you can once you create the profile so then you can add for example education experience so then you can add work experience and everything is trust everywhere is trust uh, so so then we don't destroy um, okay uh, humanitarian organization also give bottle of water for people and it's al always will give the, the those bottle of water however in the meantime there are a lot of work to do that may be done in blockchain. For example, uh, registration of people, um, educate people, and, and we can save this data in blockchain. Thank okay. you. Um, and one more. What are some of the potential challenges or limitations in implementing blockchain solutions in humanitarian missions? Okay, uh, so I think uh, I answered about um, potential. But what are the limitation? Uh, it's, this, the question is very simple because in many rural areas there is no still no internet, so no internet, no blockchain. Um, so, for example, when as we want to set up um, a software uh, school in Goma in Democratic Republic of Congo, we will also buy some Starlinks to to make internet available in the whole city. So this improve the possibility of using uh, blockchain technologies, because if you have, or for example, South Sudan, you have many places where there is no GSM, and for example, one uh, humanitarian organization don't know what's happening 100 miles ahead because there is no connection before be between those locations. Also, there is no road; you can all only go by some animal or so by some car. So. In such situation, the internet is the basic. So if there is no internet, so this is the primary limitation, probably the only one, because it's the African countries where, for example, there was no banking system before, like in the Western countries. So everything is mobile. So once somebody receives a mobile cell phone, so then it's very easy to do everything by your phone. But if you have no internet, if you have no electricity, nothing can help you. So, so we, we need to build this infrastructure to make blockchain the most uh, powerful technology in Africa. However, it is happening and a lot of money are putting for um, infrastructure projects from World Bank, from uh, United Nations, from uh, US uh, Inter Agency for International Development, uh, French uh, Agency for International Development and, and so on.
So thanks. Thank you. Uh, and one more. Uh, could you please let us know what companies does Unsung Heroes Foundation collaborate with? Uh, yes, it was in my presentation. And also, uh, I'll try to show once again. Uh, this is not about uh, blockchain yet, because we discovered the problem with blo no problem challenges and opportunities with blockchain later. However, there is like FDI world that is based on crowdfunding in blockchain with tokens, and uh, they are based in Dubai and they take part in our program. Um, however, uh, for example, for the next edition, we will focus mostly on blockchain startups because this is the future for many people living in uh, African countries. Uh, so, so regarding, uh, um, uh, because I, I, I don't know why uh, the presentation cannot, uh, can you see my presentation now? Uh, I cannot, no. OK, uh, it should be seen right now. Uh, so for example, there is the list of uh, startups uh, here. That it's 27 startups, three fintech, but mostly water tech and medtech solutions. Um, but however, as I mentioned, the next uh, um, cohort will be most focused on on blockchain technologies and blockchain solutions for um, for for, uh, for 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 people, mostly for people who has no access to banking system, has no access to local government, to hospitality, and so on. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, like 4 billion people has no access to primary healthcare, and blockchain also can support this with registration, with saving information about your docu medical documentary, uh, and so on. So, so once again, blockchain is future, uh, and the next cohorts will be more focused on blockchain. Also, when you go entry to our website, uh, ansang.tech uh, slash uh, startups, so then you can see all startups that are uh, in our program with uh, the description of uh, what uh, they are doing. Mm, and also, if you would like to mm, collaborate somehow in scaling in Africa, so we can be very helpful because we have, we have volunteers in many countries with many local non-profit and for-profit organizations working with us. So feel free to contact us about, uh, about this. Thank you. Thank you. I am taking one last look at the chat. Mm -hmm. I think this was it for our Q&A session. I don't see anything else. Uh, okay. We still have seven, eight minutes left. So Radek, if you'd like to, uh, I don't know, share a conclusion um, or have a summary for your presentation for today's session, I think um, now is the time for it. Yes, so I, I do recommend you to support, to work with nonprofit organizations, with humanitarian organizations. Um, one thing is that you can support uh, lives of many people. The second thing, they can be your regular customers so you can receive money for such collaboration. There are many, many grants opportunities. If you want to develop your solutions in Africa for societies who live under $2 a day, so um, we can contact you with uh, um, such international organizations that can support you with, the, with you. One limitation is lack of internet. One limitation is lack of uh, electricity. But um, in, in, in cities, it works. In uh, rural areas, still not. However, uh, it's going to be better and better every next year. So once you are here, the er earlier you are, the better for you. Uh, so feel invited to go to, to, to Africa as a startup, to develop here. We can support you with this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Radek, for being with us today. Um, this Thank was really an um, insightful presentation. Um, I think that is it. Uh, thank you again. And thank you, everybody, thank you. for joining. Um, stay tuned for the next session on Crack the Code, Mastering Communication in Blockchain and Web3. Thank you.